Hello. Yes, we're online. Uh, hello, my name is Magda, and I'm really happy uh, to have such a wonderful asexual activists from Poland and Hungary today. Uh, and I'm so I'm really happy that uh, that we can meet today and speak a bit about asexual activism, about advocacy. Uh, so thank you, Carolina and Victoria, for uh, for accepting accepting my invitation, <laughs> and I'm really happy. Uh, that we can speak and uh, also thanks to uh thanks to, for the support uh of uh of the u.s department uh, uh of state bureau of the Con educational and cultural affairs and also meridian international center uh who is uh, implementing partner uh of this of this project and uh, i know carolina for a while and i'm uh, really impressed by what she's doing when it comes to to asexual activism in Poland and with Victoria we met during international visitor leadership um, organized also by the Meridian and uh, US Department uh, so I'm really happy that today we have some space to meet together and to speak about uh, things which I think that important for all of us so I'm giving you the floor uh, and of course uh, you are welcome to ask the questions uh, and feel free to, to write them uh, in the event or under the, our, our transmission. Uh, and of course, there I hope that there will be some space to answer your question. And also feel free to ask them later if you, if you want to. I'm sure that Carolina and Victoria will answer them. So Carolina and Victoria, the space is yours. Thank you. Okay, Victoria. Uh, we had been talking uh, for a while right now uh, about our different ideas and um, wishes and strategies and kind of everything, I think. Uh, and today we're going to kind of sum it up because our previous uh, meeting were very long, <laughs> very long. So today we're going to present to you some kind of short um, sum up of what we have been doing and what we want to do and what are our struggles and dreams and all of that. Um, so uh, I'm going to start with the situation in our countries. I'm going to present like the situation in Poland, uh, like a little brief, and then I'm going to ask Victoria some questions about her per perspective and her experiences. Um, okay, so I think we can start because it's really hard and there's no point of wasting time. Um, so I wanted to ask Victoria, what is the official statement of Hungarian Psychological Association of, on Asexuality, because here in Poland, uh, those institutions, they don't really uh, care about us at all. Uh, you can hardly hear that uh, students, um, psychological students learn about asexuality as a, another orientation um, that is equal to heterosexual to heterosexuality, uh, bisexuality uh, or uh, homosexuality, right? Uh, I think there's a big struggle. Uh, for example, uh, in states, uh, psychological association, they do acknowledge asexuality as an orientation. But on the other hand, uh, World Health Organization, they don't. Uh, and it's kind of all connected to politics and they don't want to be controversial, I think. And the same here in Poland. Um, the university is very conservative in a sense. Um, like, as students, we have some... Um, space to do things uh to bring up topics but like officially they not much is changing and i wanted to ask you victoria how about hungary well the situation here is not better either um the hungarian psychological association has an lgbtq section and lgbtq they stop by the queue um and they kind of don't acknowledge us and it's like we didn't even exist. I think that the Q, if nothing else, the Q can cover asexuality, but they don't really um, do anything about us. Um, they work a lot with gay rights and trans rights. And sometimes it seems as if they simply don't have resources. Um, right now, um, our association the Hungarian asexual community, which has existed for more than four years now. We are working on a booklet in Hungarian, which is about asexuality and which can be used by psychologists 
and other experts, um, like school experts and doctors and so on. But it's uh, mainly, um, we are mainly doing this so psychologists can work with that because um, first information in Hungarian is very scarce and Hungarian psychologists who maybe have nothing to do with the Hungarian Psychological Association's LGBTQ section, um, most of them kind of think that asexuality is an illness caused by trauma or a hormonal imbalance, and it's something that has to be cured. Fortunately, we are seeing more and more psychologists who are kind of ex accepting and who are trying to, to acknowledge that we do exist and we do not have to be cured, but we still have a very long way to go. And our association knows more personal stories where someone who was asexual and went to a psychologist, maybe with something totally different. Um, and the psychologist tried to convert these people. You know, you are not ace. You just need to get laid or you just, you know, need to find yourself or maybe you're traumatized and so on. So um, we are trying to compile a list of psychologists who are accepting. And our list is very short, I have to tell you. Yeah, I agree what you said about uh, compiling a list of uh, ace-friendly psychologists. We do the same here in Poland. We created like a map. Um, first of all, we created like a special course that psychologists and psychiatrists can take when they can learn about the sexuality from uh, resources that already ha have been uh, provided uh, by many researchers, um, but are often excluded from, um, like I said, uh, act official psychological and psychiatric institutions, but they exist, so we provide them uh, these materials on the course, and then after they finish it, we put them on map of uh, special, of uh, ace-friendly and inclusive uh, psychologists and psychiatrists. So people who are living in different cities, they can look up uh, who have done, who have taken the course uh, that we provide, and uh, they can feel more secure in a sense, attending and, I mean, seeking um, mental health. So I agree with it, but it's like, um, it's kind of like more patching like a hole than actual like system, like working on a systemic level. I don't know if, uh, I don't know if you will know what I mean, right? Like we have to patch up the system, but we cannot change the system because like there's so many stubborn conservative people. Uh, so yeah, I agree with it, but it's so, but it's a way, right? Like if you cannot do anything more than it's a way, it's like a step, right? Because those people, so psychologists they kind of gather we gather them right and we create like a power that are educated so they also can like raise up their voices in a sense okay uh i wanted to ask also uh, about how our ace inclusive is, Hunga is hungarian lgbtq plus community uh i have to admit that like few years ago in poland you can you could hardly hear about aces in queer spaces uh, there was a lot of exclusion, uh, exclusion and um, discrimination of ACEs. Um, kind of the same discrimination that we could face from a lot of heteronormative people. Uh, but, but it changed a lot, honestly. Um, during uh, last year or even two years, um, I could notice like a significant change of how LGBTQ plus community started to uh, treat us. Uh, we got space to talk about ourselves. Uh, we got uh, really are, how to say it, how, how to say that we exist in their eyes and today bring our topics. Uh, I have to say like Magda even who did organize this meeting. Um, in Poland, we have something called coalition of marching cities and um, uh, we are working on uh, like guides for places that organize marches so they can be ace inclusive because not all the people have idea about um, what is ace culture, right? What, how, how to create a, a event that is um, inclusive and friendly for aces and actually acknowledge our, um, our little culture, right? of our community and yeah, a lot of have been done and my, I am part of the uh, board, I'm, I, I am a board, board member of Torado Association as well as um, 
captain. <laughs> like I would like I that's what I like to call myself of uh, the science club, the queer science club of, of my on my university. Uh, and we do a lot of ACE connected stuff there, honestly. Um, so yeah, it's it's it is a change, but still that you can meet people who would claim that we are we don't belong, right? And I wanted to ask how you have been working to change that. What's 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 going on in Hungary in the sense in this situation? Uh, is the situation is improving considering uh, our being as queers? Based on what you said, I think that our situations are quite similar because a couple of years ago in Hungary, you couldn't hear about asexuality. Um, I said that our organization is a bit more than four years old and we have a Facebook group which has existed a bit longer. Um, when I started to work as an AIDS activist, exclusion was quite strong and now the situation is getting slowly better. Um, we have, of course, more queer organ organizations in Hungary, and most of them do work together with us. They acknowledge it's, uh, they acknowledge that we exist. For example, in the capital, Budapest, um, um, we have Budapest Pride, and we always have an event at the Pride Month. We always have either a picnic or a workshop, and this is kind of a tradition now because this year we have had our fourth workshop. So since we are so young for us, it's a long tradition. Um, and uh, the picnic was actually a great success. More than 65 people came. So for us, it's like thousands of visitors. Um, and there are other organizations um, with which we can work together. But on the other hand, there are some queer organizations which kind of, uh, when they do research, they work with LGBTQI people, and that's where it stops. And I think it would be quite important to see how the Hungarian ACE community is faring, because we have research data from the US, but we don't really have research data from Hungary. And it would be quite important because all research from the US says that ACEs are very much discriminated against, a lot more than gay people. But in Hungary, I can't tell you anything because we simply miss the data. I have written two master's theses on asexuality, um, but it was qualitative research, so I made 10, 10 interviews, and of course you cannot generalize my experiences, but um, what we can see in our organization and in our group on Facebook, which now has almost 2,000 members, we can see that exclusion is still quite strong, even though um, and I'm not saying this because I'm an optimistic person, I can really see some change for the better. Um, in Hungary, we have two prides, one in the capital, and we have another pride in a city which is called Pécs. It's in the south of Hungary. And the pride there, or the first one was held last year, and it's going to be in September this year. And we actually have been invited to hold a workshop there. So they are quite inclusive, which I am very happy about. One big problem is that it is very, very easy to misunderstand asexuality. I have personally seen many people who are trying to be supporters, but for them, asexuality kind of means no sex. And every time I try to tell them asexuality is a total or partial lack of sexual attraction, and it has nothing to do with if you have sex or whatever you do in bed or under the shower, it kind of sometimes doesn't go into their heads. So I think when you do ACE activism, it's quite important that you you know what words to use and that you have to make sure that you can get your point across. Yeah, I think because totally time... Sorry. No, you can go no. on. Uh, no, just uh, many times, even if we have supporters, it's like, okay, you don't want to have sex, fine. And then they kind of think, well, I had two weeks in my life when I didn't have sex. So um, for me, it's not real support. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, and talking about uh, cooperation, we have different organizations, collectives and stuff like that. I think it's worth noting that um, for me also, what's the problem is, it's lack of actual ACE activists. Uh, like you said, the ACE 
Facebook groups exist for years now, both in Poland and Hungary. And even though there's like a few thousand people already on the main page, on the main group, um, actual ACE activists is only, there's few of them, honestly, in you know, entire Poland. Um, sometimes you could notice that people who are like homoromantic ACEs, they have been doing like casual um, queer activism before even they realized that they are ACEs. So there are people like that, but um, other than that, there's no many people who would first uh, came out as ACE and they would actually came to do stuff. And I find it, I find it a, kind of a real problem because first of all, when they are organizations who are inclusive, they need representation, right? They need someone who told them how to do this and that and stuff like that. And sometimes I'm overworked as ACE activist because there's too many stuff going on. Like, honestly, my association, Asfera, we got like seven invitations to different fight, fight marches, which is connected to uh, me uh, cooperating with um, Pride, Pride Association in Poland um, and like introducing ACES uh, to, to the public, right? To like, uh, that we exist and stuff like that, but like, I cannot be everywhere, right? And I'm tired sometimes. I'm tired of people asking me everything. Like, I'm not the only one, I'm not the only ace here in Poland. I mean, in my association, there are a few more people than me, but we all are, work. we are, we are all overworked. Like, right now, I'm even like, I'm at work, then I come back home, I have this meeting, and, you know, I just even can sometimes can speak because I'm so tired. Because I have no time to rest sometimes, uh, and and I think we lack of presentation. That's first. Uh, second, lack of lack of representation because that because for okay. So we have this part that we have organizations that are inclusive and supportive of, of us, and we have um, places, um, spaces, organizations, collectives that are not supportive of us, right? And well because there are so few of us we don't have such power like other communities right uh we cannot fight with all of them we cannot um we are not so powerful in this way because there are only few of us right and when there is more voices when there is more um like experiences said and showed and that's really um, say something right that's really proves that, hey, we, we are not lying. There's like so many of us, but not many people have courage to step out and do this. So that's a real problem here. And I wanted to ask how it's in Hungary in this, in this context, like, are you, do you have many people interested in activism? Like, um, do you have like a big team or no? Again, I have to say that the situation is kind of like in Poland, we don't really have many activists. And I think it has to do with the fact that being ace is totally unsexy. And when I say unsexy, um, I mean it's, it's something you get pitied for, or maybe you get bullied for. And um, Hungary, don't get me wrong, Hungary is very homophobic and transphobic. Hungarians hate everyone who is not totally like them. So um, it's not easy to be gay in Hungary either. But being ace in Hungary, it's, it's so different from everything people want and people expect that it's even very hard to just show your experiences and show that you exist and you are totally fine. Um, uh, we just had a festival last week here in Budapest and I was a living book there, which means that people could borrow me and open me like a book and read me so they could yeah. talk to me. Um, and there were many people who were very interested and open and everything. And one of them told me, I feel so sorry for you. And I could see that she really meant it. And she was trying to be nice. And I was like, you don't have to feel sorry for me. I'm totally fine the way I am. And she said, but you should feel the same I do. And I'm like, but I'm not you. So we have totally, totally different experiences. So I think it's if you work as an ace activist, 
you really have to be hard because you will meet bullies. That's the first thing. You will meet total assholes, people who want to hurt you verbally and maybe even physically. And then you will meet people who mean well, but who still hurt your feelings with their small, tiny microaggressions. Oh, I feel so sorry for you. Good that you are like that because at least you don't have any problems. I get this comment a lot. I wish I were asexual as well because you have no problems in your life. And I'm like, I have quite a lot of problems in my life. Um, and some of them even because of my asexuality, but not because I am ace, but because society reacts to me being ace in a very specific way and in a very non-understanding way. So I think um, many people who maybe would like to be activists, they get scared or, um, or they start and then they discover, okay, this is not for me because people bully me. Um, I get stupid comments on social media and so on. I am like a catastrophe tourist. And when there is a new article where I feature, I always read the comments. And so, of course, there are lots of supportive comments, um, but there are always so negative comments. And like many, many times, people kind of target me as a person. You are so ugly, I would never fuck you. Okay, I didn't even ask you. So, you know, this kind of, um, this kind of narrative. Um, and then I think there is another thing which is quite important. If you wanna be an ace activist, um, of course you, you work a lot with your own experiences, but there are so many things you have to learn and know all the labels and you have to be up to date with everything. Otherwise you kind of get the feeling that, oh my God, I cannot explain everything. And if I wanna explain everything, it takes like four hours and then there are new questions all the time. So as you said, it's very exhausting and we have a life. Uh, maybe we have a job, we go to university, we do many other things. And like you, um, like I do this and that, and then I come home, I have this meeting, which I love. Um, and I think it's very important what we are doing. Um, but sometimes you really get drained of everything. Like, come on, I need, I need a very long holiday or something. But, mm, but I think the younger generation, um, like people younger than me, I am 43 years old. So when I was a teenager, there was no internet, no talk about asexuality. But I think younger people, they kind of grew into this. And I think um, they will be able to talk about it with um, using their own experiences and so on. So when I think about the future and the future of ACE activism, I am actually very positive. Um, but I think we have to concentrate on that activists are people as well. Yeah, I totally agree with all you said. Um, maybe what I'm, well, what I'm about to say isn't going to be very optimistic, but I think, I sometimes think that if you want to be an activist, you have to be a little bit crazy. And um, I'm, it's not meant to offend anyone, okay? Just say that, because I'm activist, ace activist myself, okay? But sometimes I really think that you have to have a lot of pride and in you to came out as asexual and do ice activism because this whole system doesn't like us. Like capitalism, love romance, love uh, sexuality. It's like very, uh, very easy to sell. It's, there's so many things based on it, right? Even um, queer campaigns, they are often based in this like love and get married and marriage. And, you know, it's of course very important and I support it with all my heart. And it's even important for us because we aces can also get married with uh, people uh, of the not, not opposite gender, right? But like, it's still very based in this like marriage, martial romantic context. Um, and like you said, people often will pick up will be very bully, uh, will bully us a lot, will be mean and stuff. And you have to have a lot of pride. I don't know what's wrong with me. Uh, maybe it's caused by the fact I'm Leo. <laughs> maybe it's caused by the fact I have HDHD that I don't really, that I like um, trigger people sometimes and like be proud, be prideful and stuff like that. And yeah, I've noticed a lot of mean comments and actually my friends sometimes will would text me that oh my god people men are so awful and I would just say oh well I like to trigger them and that's kind of like a way for me but I know it's not a way for everyone right uh, I'm 23 
So uh, I'm trying to think that um, I'm, I do pave a way for younger people than me, like teenagers and stuff who will maybe in a few years, like replace me in a way if, when I will be so done. <laughs> I will have no power now. I need to have some freaking long holidays to gain my power back kind of. Um, so yeah, it is, a, it is a exhausting and um, it's like, it's like a long way, like you said, and um, and you'll be, because like we are, ex we don't fit anywhere kind of, I feel like sometimes, and that's my experience difficult, like you said, but really hoping that it will change. I know, I know it's changing a little bit. Um, so I hope it will be like Domino, right? We do a little bit and you know, then the big wave starts. Uh, okay. And so, just one, one last mm -hmm. thing before we go on. Uh, like you said, of course, sex sells and love sells. And I get always crazy when I see the slogan, love is love. Of course, fine, love is love and love makes a family. I totally agree. But I think love is love kind of takes um, even for not even aces, but gay people or bisexual people. Why can't you just have sex without love? What's wrong with that? So this love is love for me. I know it's easy to digest, easy to understand. And I know that we need easy messages. And that's the problem with ace activism, because we do not have easy messages. Of course, we have cake is better than sex, but that's so simplifying. Yeah, I agree. It's kind of funny. I mean, I really like this custom of like giving a, giving cakes on the ace groups and stuff like that. Um, but like how, like cake sometimes is just like, I'm sometimes fed up with this cake. <laughs> like I want like ace revolution. I want ace army. Yeah, that's what I like, honestly. <laughs> yeah, cake was for me, cake, cake era was like high school. And now it's like army era. For aces i have okay i i see magda uh yes, so because i have to ask a question <laughs> and I, and i really like uh, i really like that um uh, you started to say about what's wrong and you finish with this optimism so it's um it's something uh, it's really important for me and also in my my queer activism uh but i i'm the idea of this uh of those talks and those interviews uh, was also uh, about when, when it comes to activism and how to do it, to do, how, to share experience and how to take care of each other for, uh, also in this activism. Uh, so like, you know, um, listening to you, Karina, I, I have to ask, ask the question uh, to Victoria and to you about what is important in your activism and how do you take care of yourself of, uh, and your community if you want to share this? You want to be first, Victoria? Oh, yes, thank you. I can start. And thanks for the question. Um, for us, the first thing is um, we want to spread information. And we want to spread information in a way which can be understood. And it's not on a very high academical level. Um, because it's quite important that we can talk about asexuality with everyone. So um, it's not only you know research-based stuff. We can talk about our own experiences and so on. Um, the second very important thing for us is um, to help our community. Um, every research shows that around 1% of the population is asexual. Um, this number might be actually a bit higher, but let's stick with this 1% because it's an easy number to handle. In Hungary, we have more or less 10 million people, a bit under 10 million, but whatever. So it means there are 100,000 ace people in Hungary. And our group has a bit under 2,000. So we could only reach a very tiny bit of the ACE population. Um, and of course, um, it can mean that many people uh, do not have access to internet and so on. So we really have to get off the of social media and try to get to people. That's why we hold workshops in other cities than the capital. That's why we try to, to write booklets, which can be you know handed out offline and can be read by anyone in Hungarian, of course. And it's very important for us. And Carolina, you were talking about pride and feeling pride. And I think it's a very important thing that being ace is nothing to be ashamed of. For me, I always think of it as the color of my eyes. I did not pick that. I got it. And I'm totally fine with it. 
Um, it's not something that makes me better than anyone else, but it's not even something that makes me worse than anyone else. So it's just a part of me. And I think it would be quite important that every ace person understands this. In our Facebook group, very, very often we have people who post, it's so good that you exist. I had the feeling that something was wrong with me my whole life, but now I can see that you exist. I can see that there are people like me, so I do not feel so alone. And I think if someone feels that way their whole life, um, then we really should do something about it. So for me, activism is very, very important because of this, to show people that there's totally nothing wrong with them. So uh, except everything that Victoria already have said, uh, has said, uh, I would add that um, if you want to do ACE activism, uh, you should find a place that will accept you. So I would advise you like just look uh, on social media. Uh, if you don't want to work in specific aims like a sexual community, a sexual group, collective association, uh, then just look up what uh, groups, what queer groups seem to be accepting and inclusive. And I think there you will feel safe and comfortable. Uh, I think something that can be uh, draining out for people, it's feeling that they don't really know if they can trust this pe these people that they work with or not, right? Um, if, the pe if, if they're actual honest in what they're doing for them or they just do it for the PR, right? They don't want to be uh, viewed as ace exclusive, but in fact, they actually are in their minds, right? So I would... I would advise like look for honest people and like just make some research, ask people who are already ace activists where work where it's worth to start, who can like for some recommendation. Um for other things, um how to take care of your activism. Honestly, I don't really know because um because it's hard, honestly. There's so much so few of us and um I would just say it's not it's not going to be that easy. Depends on how uh, it. I would say that also you have to remember that you don't have to involve your whole life in the, in it, right? If you want to just uh, do just a little, then just do it. Like don't put a pressure on yourself, like as much as I do, that I have to be a savior and like um, change the whole world now. Like you don't have to do it. You don't have to fall in this mindset, right? Like yeah, I would just say that to people who are starting now. Because no one did tell me that, and that's why I'm like now in the state of constant overworking, being overworked. So that's what I would advise people how to take care of their activist, of their activism. Uh, if I can ask you um, for the end, if someone in Poland or in Hungary or just someone abroad is looking for some uh, contacts or organizations and initi initiatives in, in our countries to a sexual community where they should look for or who? Well, uh, you can contact me. You can uh, try reaching Asfera. And honestly, uh, I would say that most of Actually, all organizations in Poland, like usually based in big cities, um, because in Poland we often have like this big city um, strategy that like there is usually like a big queer, queer organization in every big city in Poland, and I think mo most of them in Poland are inclusive, so you can reach them out, and I'm sure that they will be fine uh, with you and uh, with your um, with your identity, with your life, with with you being you. Um, yeah, honestly, I think it's not really an issue. You can just text them and uh, they often organize meetings for new people who would like to uh, volunteer and stuff. So just feel free to do it. I, I'm sure that it's going to be fine in Poland, definitely. And if anything, you can just always text us better. I kind of want to say the same. Um... Our organization, the Hungarian Asexual Community in Hungarian, Magyar Asexualis Közösség, um, we, uh, we can be reached on social media. So um, everyone is welcome to write to us and to contact us. Um, we usually answer within a couple of hours, tops. 
and we are always happy to to welcome new members in our community so feel free thank you very much and thank you for your time and for this meeting uh, or if there anything you want to add of course feel free <laughs> Uh, but I think that there was a lot of information and uh, it's also not the end because there will be also an interview uh, with Victoria. So uh, be prepared. <laughs> we will uh, definitely let you know when it, uh, it will happen. And also just feel free to share um, share our meeting and to ask questions and to also be in touch with uh, Carolina and Victoria if you have any questions or want to gather any information about the sexuality activism in Poland and Hungary. Thank you again. Have a great evening and thank you to all the people who watched us and mm -hmm. uh, who will also watch us. Uh, so have a great evening and bye. See you. Magda, I just